Hey guys, one of the things we are asked to do in AP Chem that kind of seems impossible until you have a strategy is to do logs and exponents in your head or to be able to estimate pHs from hydrogen concentrations and hydrogen concentrations from pHs. So um, for this, it's a strategy where you just have to get close enough for a multiple choice kind of eliminating options or to make sure that your answer on a free response makes sense. So these are equations that were given. If it's a free response, plug it into your calculator, you're good to go. But if it's a multiple choice, or if you're just kind of really trying to check quickly or ballpark, which sometimes you're asked to estimate in free response, um, you can do this. The idea of a log or log base 10 is what we kind of default to here, is that it's more or less undoing an exponent. So this link right here takes you to Wikipedia and it's got all the right definitions on this mantissa and all of these different terms. Um, that maybe your math teachers know that we don't really need to know. What we need to know is if we're doing negative logs and we're doing exponents here, it's really simple when we have easy numbers or when we think about the whole number of what a pH means. So a pH of three is basically undoing our very, very small decimal or our small decimal of our hydrogen ion concentration. That three, by doing the log of it's getting rid of the 10 to the power, the negative's getting rid of the negative. So a pH of three means that our hydrogen concentration is one times 10 to the negative power, 1.001. pH of fives to the negative fifth, a pH of 11 to the negative 11th, and going the other way is just as easy. If I know my hydrogen concentration is one to the negative fourth, then my pH is four. If my hydrogen concentration is one to the negative eight, it's eight. What becomes more challenging is when we don't have these really easy numbers. And one of the issues is that it's easy to kind of estimate and they're going to give you good options that seem right, but are actually you're kind of nudging or estimating the wrong way. So when we are estimating, what we're going to do is sometimes for multiple choice, we round off. This strategy was given to me by another AP teacher um, where he can do all these logs totally in his head. I cheated and used my calculator. But by bounding or saying what two numbers that are easy to do the logs of is this value between. So 4.5 times 10 to the negative fourth is bigger than 1 to the negative fourth, but smaller than 10 to the negative fourth. So we're saying it's between these two values. And then we're thinking about, well, this isn't really good scientific notation here. That's actually 1 to the negative third. And this is where people sometimes rush through and make their mistakes. It's either one to the negative fourth, that would be a pH of four, but really I have more hydrogen than that. So my pH has to be not higher than four or to the negative fifth, it has to be to the negative third, lower than four. So one to the negative fourth or 10 to the negative fourth would be like, okay, well I've got a 10 and I move it four places, which is the same as one and moving it three places. So if it was one to the negative third, the pH would be three. If it was one to the negative fourth, the pH would be four. It's pretty close to the middle, but when you get into logs here, realize it's not a linear relationship there. Um, it's exponential or a log relationship. So we're between those two, kind of close to the middle, but that just means that it's not gonna be 3.1 and it's not gonna be 3.9. So we're somewhere between those. We can estimate that, okay, it's around four, but this means I have more hydrogen, so it's lower than four. Often they will give you the options of four, of three, of maybe five, and then something between those as well. So here, 2.3 times 10 to the negative eighth is between one to the eighth and 10 to the eighth, which is one to the eighth and one to the seventh, remember. So this is like, well, my pH is around eight, but I actually have a little bit more hydrogen, so I'm actually a little bit closer to that lower pH. So in between one to the negative seventh and one to the negative eighth, the pH of seven and eight. Here, I spaced it out. It's way closer to this number. And that's why our pH is closer to eight than it is to seven. But once again, not linearly. Um, we can also do this the other direction when we're given the pHs, we're thinking that, okay, well, it's 4.65, that's between four and five. If it was four, it'd be one to the negative fourth. Five, it'd be one to the negative fifth. It's between those. So I need a number between those. And we need to remember that that is kind of something bigger than this. So maybe one to the negative fifth, maybe three to the negative fifth, six to the negative fifth. We could do all sorts of different estimations, but just know that it's something to the negative fifth. Don't be fooled by that number there. 
Sometimes I think of this as the number in front of your decimal in the pH. That's how many zeros you would have down here. So we would have, if we're to the negative fifth, we would move the decimal one, but then we would also, and we write this point, zero, 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 two, two more. That means that four told me I had four zeros there. That's only when we're between numbers, so it's not exactly true. Um, if we're at one of these numbers here, that's one to the fifth or um, one to the fourth, but it's fine for these. It's the number of zeros in between. So it's a strategy that takes some time to practice, but it's really simple and hopefully straightforward in terms of understanding what we can take these really hard numbers and estimate them somewhat reasonably.